Good morning. Welcome as we do gather together for worship this day as we come together to give our thanks and praise to the Lord our God. We do continue to pray for all those who are listed in our bulletin. I would invite you to, if you uh, have anyone on that list, to please do update us in the office uh, so that we can make sure uh, that we have all the updated information about them that they should be moved to another part uh, and the like. Uh, also invite those who are online uh, to also add any other names uh, that you would like folks to lift up during the week. Is there anyone else that we should be especially mindful of in this morning's worship? See none? I, I also invite those who are online to please do check in, to like, or to comment on the feed so that we know that you are there. Um, and I invite the congregation, those who are here, to please stand as we begin our worship with our call to worship. Creative, passionate God, you delight to shape the world in beauty and harmony. You invite us to participate in the balance of creation. We grow in wisdom as our experience unfolds. We take the learning out of difficult situations. And we're also finding our own and the best we need to come to the Too often we give in to temptation that disrupts the joyous, chaotic order of the universe. We cannot undo all our mistakes, but we can turn once more to the living presence of Jesus, and we find new ways to live and to love each other. Do not let our hearts be fearful, but let us in silence acknowledge our sin and seek the forgiveness that restores our peace. So we pause in this time, seeking the renewing power of God's Spirit as it moves among us. We seek your grace to burn away the blemish of our sin. And so we pause for a moment of reflection and self-examination of all the ways in which we have needed God's grace and mercy this week. Even as Adam and Eve faced the consequences of their sin, our God prepared a way for them still to be connected to the earth and to the living presence of God. So it is with all of us. In Christ's life, ministry, death, and resurrection, we are made, we are able, we are made able to persist upright and strong, for our sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. Join in our opening hymn.
grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, you fill heaven and earth with your presence, and your eyes have watched over all from the foundations of the earth. We have heard the distant sound of your voice in prophets and apostles from long ago. But we are hard of hearing, so hard of hearing. Our eyes are dim and cannot see. Come near, Lord, and touch us with your presence. Lay your hand upon our hearts. Bring forth praise in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Reading from Genesis. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, You may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. And the Lord God made garments of skins for the man and for his wife, and clothed them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the, clothes the grass of the field which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Standing as we sing, I need to change that there. <laughs> as we sing a couple verses of, uh, one verse of Amazing Grace and a, and a new verse added to that.
to you from God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last weekend I was in Florida. It was hot enough there. Now I think I brought the weather back with me. Um, but, um, but it was for a wedding of a family member. And so I had uh, made a cross, just a simple kind of little cross stitch thing for she and her, for her now husband, for Courtney and Travis. And the thing about most cross stitch projects that I do is like, it's a lot of counting and often I count wrong. So there's some that you can kind of like fudge on a little bit and others you can't. So this one was a little simpler, which meant that if I made a mistake, it was going to show much more. Whereas one, another one I did, which was of the Starry Night, of Van Gogh's Starry Night, were lots of variations of colors. And so it really didn't matter because it was all impressionistic anyway, right? So it didn't matter the mistakes I made, although I could sometimes pick them out. There's some mistakes that we can cover over and kind of go and kind of like let slide and others that are a little more obvious. My father always told the story about when he was little, probably, two, I think he was probably around two or so. And for whatever reason, he had an accident on the bathroom floor, thankfully. And it was not number one, it was number two, and it was quite a bit. And so rather than just trying to clean it up. He was two. He probably didn't know how to do it. He covered it over with a, with a, a baby powder. Just poured a whole thing of baby powder over so it would cover it up, which made more of a mess, right? We can try to cover up our mistakes or slide them aside or just kind of fudge a little bit on them, but sometimes they always come back. Some mistakes are bigger than others. We have this familiar story of Adam and Eve and the fall, but it's about much more than that. As we're hearing, we'll hear throughout this summer, we're looking at ways in which God's grace is made present, even in the midst, as we see today, even in the midst of judgment. Now, I just, I did jump over a bunch of verses there that after they sow the fig leaves, then there's God's walking in the garden and saying, where are you, Adam and Eve? Why are you hiding? And they confessed, saying, we ate of the tree and we covered ourselves. We tried to hide it. You know, there are some things we can hide from others, but there's nothing, nothing that we can hide from God. God sees all. Even though God asked them kind of what's going on, God already knew what was going on. God had said, here is all of Eden. Here's all the beauty of my creation. You are created in my image and you are very good to care and tend for all that I gave you except this one tree. And isn't that the thing about us humans? We say you can't have this one thing. It makes you want to do it all that much more. Like you're talking about with Brian, not wanting to touch his nose because you're not supposed to touch his nose because of his surgery. You want to touch your nose, right? Somebody tells you not to do something. What, what will happen if I do? And the serpent here says, well, what did God really say? And Eve, even in her recounting of it, it wasn't really what God said. God didn't say they would die. God just said, don't eat of it. But still, they were tempted. And not only did they not do what God asked them to do, but then they try to cover it up. Cover up their own shame with fig leaves. Now, I don't really know how big a fig leaf is, but I do know that anything out of nature ain't gonna last very long. I have a pot in my, in my living room that I bought a hyacinth for Easter. I haven't watered it. It's dead, very dead, but it's still there because those things only live so long. We can see the beauty of creation outside, but we know that in a few months, the leaves will give up their lives and fall to the ground and another season will pass. The fig leaves aren't gonna last at all. They can only cover up their sin, not the, their bodies as the sin, but of their disobedience. They can only cover up their disobedience so far, just like my dad. <laughs> covered up with baby powder. It was only gonna be invisible for a very short time. We can try to cover things up, dismiss things, push things aside, but it's gonna come out one way 
or the other, either through the discovery by others or by our own guilt or by circumstances. Sin gets revealed. And maybe in our whole lifetime, we can cover up something for, for others to never see, but God, God already knows. So God had some choices here. God could have said at this point, like, all right, these two aren't gonna cut it, let's start again. He could have punished them in other ways, and he did punish them in a sense. He drove them out of Eden. They could no longer go back there to that perfect world. But God didn't kill them. God didn't transform them and say, okay, well now you're gonna, poof, you're gonna do everything I want you to do no matter what. God still said, all right, you still have choices. And he covers them with garments, with garments that would last a little longer than a fig tree. Because the thing about our guilt or even about our sin that God points to is that it's not so much about who we are, but about what we do. Brene Brown talks a lot about shame. She's an author, a sociologist, and she, she researches and studies shame. And basically she says it comes down to the fact that shame points to who we are, whereas guilt points to what we do. But God says, yes, you're guilty, but don't, you're not a person of shame. You are still created in my image. You still reflect God's goodness. Even when we sin, there's still that God spark within us, still that reflection of God's goodness in us that says it's not about who you are, but about what you did. And it was not so much about eating the apple or whatever kind of fruit it was. It wasn't about the actual food itself of eating it. It was about not trusting God. God said, don't eat it. And we can try to figure out why God, why did God even put that tree there? But for whatever God's reason is, we don't know. But God said, trust me and don't eat it. You have all these other things. Trust me and don't do it. Because following God, trusting God, leads to the fullness of life. When we try to go our own way, when we try to do our own things, when we turn aside from those things that are not of God, we always get ourselves in trouble. But when we look to God, God says, this is where the fullness of life is. This is what it means to be loving to one another. This is what, what it means to live in the midst of grace. This is what it means to be a reflection of who God is. This is life, not that. And we can try to cover up our sins all we want, but God still sees. And so while this is a story of judgment, because they are expelled from Eden, they can't live in this bounty anymore, God still doesn't give up on them. God still covers them and says, it's not about, it's not about who you are, but about what you did. And I call you again and again to trust me, God says. But it's not then about whether we fulfill that or not, but about what it tells us about God. Ultimately, all of scripture is about what it tells us about God, that yes, sure, it points to our sin, points to our failings, points to our mistakes, but ultimately, it tells us about who God is. That even in our sin, even in our guilt, even in our mistakes, that we are still loved by God, that God still looks at us as a reflection of God's self, that God still offers God's grace even when we don't deserve it, even when we've done everything against what God says we should do. God's grace is still there because that's who God is. And it's for that reason that we do proclaim thanks be to God.
whole church in heaven and on earth, we confess our faith as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. We pause to humbly offer up our prayers before God, for the church, the world, and all those in need. In a world where many would seek to damage your creation, bring hatred to your people, show violence to your children, help us always to be grateful for the gifts of love and life, for the glimpse of transforming beauty and unending wonder. Take us now and use us as well to combat evil and destruction wherever we find it. God of everlasting grace, hear our prayer. In a world driven by greed and a lust for power, where the material threatens to overwhelm the spiritual, where goodness seems too frail in the face of badness, help us not to give up, give up on righteousness and truth, to believe that you can use well the gifts we offer, that you will call forth the gifts of your people again and again. God of everlasting grace, hear our prayer. In a world where people are broken at the hands of humanity and by the vagaries of nature, help us to trust the healing of your blessing and love, placed even now in the hands of those who seek to face down injustice and champion human rights who stand in dark places with your light held high, who give of themselves for the sake of others. God of everlasting grace, hear our prayer. In a world where we struggle to understand pain and suffering, and most especially in the lives of those we love, we bring before you those for whom we weep, those we embrace in our hearts, those to whom we reach out in, in the yearnings of our prayers now as well as for those who have no one to name them and those who do not know christ's name god of everlasting grace hear our prayer in a world where we can feel so insignificant and helpless help us to know you have a place for us lift our spirits when we don't feel good enough fit us into your plan in amazing ways god of everlasting grace Hear our prayer. In a world where so much is focused on the here and now, help us to remain bound with those who have gone before us, to rejoice in our fellowship in the one kingdom of your love, to give thanks that from time to time we have a glimpse of eternity. God of everlasting grace, hear our prayer. Hear other petitions may be offered silently aloud or in the comments. All these prayers and those that we breathe with sighs too deep for words, we offer before you, trusting always in your everlasting grace that unfolds all in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And share a sign of peace with one another. Gracious God, you have abundantly blessed us, and we offer our thanks and praise. We place our gifts before you, seeking to use them to further your kingdom. God of all creation, all you have made is good. 
and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We dream, O oh God, of community, but in waking hours we forget such hopes. Our dreams we call alien, our sister and brother we call stranger. You call us by name, with arms outstretched as on a cross. You call us to yourself, and you name us your own people. And so with arms outstretched, we now embrace new friends and forgotten dreams. Body broken and life blood poured, transform our fears, revive our dreams. For we do remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, that our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Renew us, O God, with your spirit, that we may receive this mystery of your body, remembering that Christ Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Embracing its manifold gifts, shouting an amen that joins all God's people, boldly and loudly proclaiming, Amen, and amen, again, and again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The line is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This was just a cup filled with wine. This was just ordinary bread. Until Jesus took them and drank, took, and took and drank from the cup, even though it was his cup of pain, filled with the agony of the world. He took and broke the bread, even though his body was too young to be broken. This and these would be ordinary lives. Unless the bread, unless the wine is poured into them, and the mystery of grace takes place. Come now, not because you fully understand, but because you need to reach out and receive the life that is offered to you. This is God's table in all our hope.
Let's pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and to continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May be seated. Take this opportunity to share our mission and ministry announcements. I would ask if there's anyone who has any announcements you'd like to share. Don Morello, if you're watching, just close, just mute it briefly, and I'll give you a thumbs up when you can unmute it. Um, so just um, for, for Don Morello, we are having a celebration for her, but also as a part of it that's not included, I think, there. We're going to, uh, uh, I guess it is, uh, that we're making, a, if folks would like to make a contribution for a gift for her, um, from the from the congregation, just um, you can do that through the, either mail it to the church office, or you can do that through our web page. That there is a link for that. So Dawn, you can unmute if you're there. Um, but we will be having a celebration for Dawn on uh, in two weeks, two weeks already from now. Um, she will be ordained on June 19th uh, by the synod, but it is very limited in terms of who can uh, attend. There will be a live stream, and I will make sure that that's put up. Um, where folks can, can watch it as well. Um, but on that Sunday, we will be having a celebration for her during worship and then immediately following with a reception. Uh, Joanne Ickens kind of overseeing that. And if you'd like to bring a dish to pass for a brunch, uh, to please do so, or if you, can, if you want to contact her for any other information. We're also asking folks to just make reservations that's purely for planning purposes. We're not going to turn you away, but it's really helpful for us if you make reservations. There is a link to do that online, or you can just contact the office uh, and let us know that you're coming just so that we have a guesstimate about how many people are attending. We have hired a new office administrator. Yay! <laughs> her name is Sue Ellen Kelly. Do take the opportunity to greet her if you get a chance to stop by or, or make a phone call. It'll take her a while to get, a, get used to all of us at names and, and uh, faces to put together, uh, but we uh, but she, is, she started this past Wednesday, so. Uh, if there's any mistakes in the bulletin, still though, it's my mistake because I didn't catch them. Um, but uh, but do greet, take us the opportunity to greet her. Our Wednesday faith formation continues through June. Uh, we are looking at short stories uh, in relationship to faith. Um, so I have uh, packets of those. If there's folks who would like to to read those, um, we're actually going to be covering two this week: a Ragman by Walter Wangerin uh, and uh, um, this. Uh, now I can remember what it's called. Silence of the Field, Field of Silence by Annie Dillard. Um, so if you'd like to, to, they're very short stories. We're still meeting online on Zoom. Uh, so if you're interested in that, let me know and I can send you the link. And we are resuming Terra Cycle. Uh, so if anyone would like to have things that they can donate towards that, the things like toothpaste tubes, toothbrushes, shampoo bottles, things that you cannot normally recycle. We do recycle those and get a very pennies for them, but it keeps them out of the landfills. Uh, so they, they can be just put into the coat closet or some um, bins for that. Uh, we also meet for Sunday school today for the last time um, for the families who, are, who do that. Um, we'll be starting about 11 o'clock and the link is there in your bulletin. Is there any others? Seeing none, I invite you to stand then as we conclude our time of worship together with God's blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be good to you. May the Lord fill you with peace, love, and much laughter. And may he set you free to celebrate the life that God has given you in all its fullness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
is risen. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.